again and welcome back to my channel my lovely witches today i have something that i've created that is not a new idea it's been espoused by many different spiritual practitioners witches etc i can think of two off the top of my head being um kellyanne maddox and molly roberts um but it's talking about using pop culture characters or historical figures even as deities or saints. In, in my case, I've decided to create a devotional um, of six witch saints, five of them being fictional characters, one being a historical character. Now, these are really, really personal to me so my reasons for choosing them my reasons for calling on them um, are really really super personal to me so they may not resonate with you but I think this is hopefully going to give you um, perhaps some ideas on what you might like to do for saints or pop culture deities of your own um, that are really personal to you and that you can implement into your practice. So I, I started with a board book. This is the board book that I created um, that I was going to do colour magic in. And I've, I've shown this in a previous video and I decided not to do the colour magic in it. And instead I put it aside to use it for another project. This is that project. So... <clears throat> The very first saint in the book is Saint Wednesday. Um, so for me, she is patron saint of witches who don't conform to the norm. So I call on Saint Wednesday when I feel like I don't belong to remind me that my individuality is my strength and something to be proud of. So I've created this book so that I can sit it on my altar um, I can put a candle on here if I choose to, or just have the saint, you know, sort of upright in the background of my altar. And along with this book, which I've, you know, mostly just collaged in, um, over the top of those pages that I had previously collaged colour into, but I'm also... Um, I've also created some candles, devotional candles, and I've used hot glue, and we're already losing things. I've already lost a spider. <laughs> it's a Corrigan video. It's a Corrigan creation. Uh, they don't stick very well to the glass. I think that's why. They stick fine to the label. Um, I hope. We'll see. I should learn to use other glues, but hot glue is just easy. Anyway, so I've used the same imagery in all of my candles as I have in the book. And then I have just added some 3D elements. Um, in this case, bats and spiders. For Wednesday, I think um, I think that works well for her and this black jet jewel. I, um, I bought these candles at absolutely absurd expense i know over in the us novena candles or seven day candles like these are cheap as chips in australia the only ones i've been able to find via a catholic um supply company are actually i i ordered a whole bunch of them because they were quite reasonably priced only to have them arrive and find that they were not glass, but plastic. I know, mind-blowing. Um, I have used them, but I am absolutely terrified every time I try and light one that it's just going to melt and catch fire and just go whoosh. I cannot believe that they'd be used in a church of all places. Anyway. Perhaps they are trusting in God or something. Um, moving on. So this is Wednesday. Patron saint of witches who don't conform to the norm. Now next on our list is one of my favourite characters, Baba Yaga. 
and I've made her Saint Baba Yaga because I think she fits in this um, witchy saint realm. Some people will see her as a deity and I'm not averse to that, to be fair. Um, but I grew up with her as a character in a fairy tale. Uh, loved her as a character in a fairy tale. So I feel she fits more in the in the saint sort of category for me. But, you know, you do you, boo. You work with whoever you want. So I've um, chosen this very traditional, oh, I can't remember the name of the artist, but, you know, you look up Baba Yaga and this guy's portrait of Baba Yaga is used everywhere. I believe it is no longer in copyright, um, but correct me if I am wrong. And I've just added mushrooms and skulls and, you know, plants, as you, you can imagine with Baba Yaga. And she is patron saint of the Witch in the Woods. Um, so for me, I would call on Saint Baba Yaga to embrace my inner hag and celebrate my solitary nature. I, as much as I love people and I'm a friendly person, I'm a super, super introverted person. And so I don't like being amongst people all the time. I much prefer to be on my own. I'm a very solitary person. I do catch up with family. I do catch up with friends. But unlike other people I know who sort of like to make plans every weekend, um, I'm like, maybe every three months I'll do something. Otherwise, please just leave me alone to be at home and be my little haggy self. So I feel that's a very Baba Yaga kind of energy. And... Um, I, I embrace that. So I've, again, I've used the same image. I've added more mushrooms and skulls and some leaf trim, a bone, because she's, you know, renowned for her bony fence. And I've included this little tag that was from some either snail mail or it might have actually been a purchased ephemera kit from Molly Roberts. And these are, that skull stamp is one of La Green Witch's. I think the other stamps are all mine. So there she is. Baba Yaga. Patron saint of the witch in the woods. So next up, we have the historical figure of Frida Kahlo. And I know she gets a lot of love these days around the world. Um, she's got that very iconic look. Her art is super amazing and I know it's been reproduced regularly on everything from cushions to bath candles to t-shirts to tea towels to just, just everything. Um, I love her work too but for me she is a patron saint of art witches with chronic pain. So I call on Saint Frida when pain, illness or disability interferes with my ability to desire or desire to create art. Being someone, a chronic pain sufferer, um, being disabled, it's frustrating as hell. <laughs> um, and it's very frustrating when that interferes with my art and my art witchery. Um, and I feel like she's a great saint to call on to find a way around or through that um so i've created a candle for her too of course with some little silver leaf trim and just some bits and bobs of sparkly shiny prettiness um to go along with with her her vibe Now, the next saint is possibly my favourite of my saints, and that is Saint Cassie. If you watch the Hallmark series, The Good Witch, or any of the movies, it's a long-running, very cheesy series about a witch, essentially, um, in a small town. I know a lot of people hate it. I absolutely flipping love it. It just makes me, it's it's got that real feel good, um, 
cozy, comfy. To me, she is patron saint of all things comfy, cozy, and witchy. Um, I just, I have literally watched that series and the films over and over and over again. If I'm having a shit time, I will go either to Harry Potter or to The Good Witch to make me feel better. So um, she's just got this wonderful, you know, green witch, kitchen witch, you know, vibe. Um, all things tea and essential oils and cooking up magic. And I just, it, I just love it. I just really love it. So here's her candle, some sparkly jewels. And um, I, I think she's possibly going to be, because I've only just made this, I haven't even used any of these candles yet. I think she's going to be the first one that I pop on my altar for a bit. So call on St. Cassie to bring comfort and healing in stressful times and to practice self-care. She is definitely the patron saint of self-care for sure. So the next one, you will be somewhat familiar with her um, in my life, and that is Saint Ursula, someone I really closely identify with. I adore her character. I have never been a massive fan of Disney, and, and I've spoken about that on the channel before, um, but this particular character really resonates for me. And for me personally, I I identify with the fact that she is old and fat, and we don't we don't see character representations like that. Um, I mean, she's supposed to be the evil one. I don't actually think she's that evil. I think she's actually pretty cool. Um, but we don't see characters represented like that, generally speaking, in a positive light. Um, it's all young and skinny that's that's what the ideal standards of society are you know so i've done self-portraits of me as as ursula and i've now made her a saint and she is patron saint of awesome old fat witches so call on saint ursula to bolster your self-esteem and to remind you how incredibly powerful you are So I've given her candle a lovely sea theme. She's got this beautiful bright can, bright candle, bright ribbon, and she's got shells. She's got a little dolphin here, um, and a sort of pearly trim on the bottom. So yeah, patron saint of awesome old fat witches. Yeah. Okay. And the last one, Saint number six, is Saint Willow. Um, I'm a massive long-term fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Just pff, love that show. Love it. Uh, again, something I have seen, I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've, I've watched it. You know, when I first started watching it, I think it was actually up to series four. So I hadn't seen it prior to that, but that was when it was airing on television for the first time. So I started watching it at season four and bought the videotapes, not even DVDs, videotapes of the previous seasons and gradually ended up with, I think I had about five or six seasons on video before I moved over to buying the DVDs. Eventually, I bought all of the DVDs as well. And I just watched it constantly, like constantly. Um, now I just watch it on Disney Plus. But, <laughs> you know, I would watch it on DVD if I didn't have another way to watch it because I will not ever stop watching this show. I love it. So I've given um, Willow this lovely witch shop aesthetic using some printables from La Green Witch um, and some other stickers as well. And she is, for me, patron saint of 90s whimsy goth witches, which is 
where I started in witchcraft back in the 90s. I think maybe even as early as the late 80s for me. About 89, 1990, something around then was when I started to, to learn about and get into witchcraft. So she is the embodiment of a 90s witch for me. Um, so I call on Saint Willow to embrace my inner nerd and go back to my witchy roots. And I love the fact that she was also the computer nerd. Not that I ever was. I've never been that IT. I've never been a gamer. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not a Luddite, but I'm also not, you know, super, super, super into a lot of that, you know, <sighs> computing stuff but I am a complete nerd <laughs> I am a full nerd so I loved that aspect of her as well because she was she was a nerd but she was damn powerful so I've given her um, candle a bit of a whimsy goth feel as well I've added some resin pieces moon and pentagram and some brightly colored jewels and sequins and and things Saint Willow love her i i i think i'm looking forward to working with her too um so that is my saint devotional my witch saint devotional i genuinely just loved putting this together and it actually came together relatively quickly um i mean i love board books because they don't tend to have lots of pages and you can actually create a project generally quite quite quickly um, having said that, I've, I've started projects like this and then not finished them. So, you know, queen of unfinished projects is me. I'm, I'm too much of that Gemini moon and I get really excited about one thing and then literally five minutes later I'm working on something new. But this one came together quite quickly. Um, really, in a matter of a couple of days, I put these, both the candles and the saint book together. And I just, hmm, had so much fun doing it. I highly recommend this. I know some people will see this as a bit weird um, because, you know, they prefer to have this sort of established, old, mythical um, practice going on. But <sighs> you make your practice work for you and in my world the things that I love aren't all the old witchy aesthetic so this is really fun it's really super personal to me I mean the idea of calling on any of the catholic saints doesn't really work for me um even as a um, child I didn't was not really exposed to the Catholic faith I don't have I don't come from a Catholic family um, I mean my dad was an atheist but even you know the rest of the family sort of have a um, Church of England Protestant um, vibe background so you know they don't have, they don't really have saints um, so it's never something that's actually really kind of made me think, oh, you know, I could adapt that into my, my witchcraft practice. And I know a lot of people do, and I think that's really cool. Um, but it doesn't vibe with me. It doesn't, it doesn't resonate for me. So, but I really liked the idea of having saints that I can go to. So, um, ta-da, here are six of my saints. I might, uh, I might adapt more characters to become saints. It is surprising to me that there's not a single Harry Potter character in here and I haven't done a Saint Sybil. <laughs> and I probably will, but at this stage, my saints don't include anything, anyone from the Harry Potter world. Um, and I, but I love all of my saints and I, and I can't wait to start working with them. I hope this has inspired you. I will stop rambling um, and I will see you very soon. I'm literally going to film another two videos today. So there's more coming, guys. I'll probably drop them over the next, you know, month or so. But um, 
more coming very, very soon. I have new books that I want to show you and, and I have flip throughs that I want to show you. So um, I'm going to go do that now and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye, my loves.